Hey guys, I'm here with Boaster from Fnatic. They recently just had a, a very big win, as you can see. He's quite larger than me currently. He's looking very big uh, with our green screen Finally. setup. Uh, and you know, Boaster, how does it feel to be so tall? As the first question, how are you feeling at being this tall? <clears throat> Honestly, I guess the win must have given me that kind of hype boost, and uh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling Gucci. I'm feeling great. It feels good. It feels good. Should probably scoot more here. Um, okay. Well, first up, you are the IGL of Fnatic. You're the guy that's moving them forward a lot. And this is the first LAN event for Valorant. Do you feel like being on LAN has changed being an in-game an, an in leader? Do you feel like you're able to do more as an IGL for Fnatic? Because your reads were so good during that match. You had a lot of great rotations. Do you feel like that's helped you more being on LAN as being an IGL? Um, I say definitely, you know, because once you're on stage, you're in the zone, you know, you can kind of feel the kind of atmosphere of the enemy team. You can feel the atmosphere of your team when your guys are feeling it. If someone wants to go for a pick, I can see it in his eyes and I'm like, yo, Durka, go free, be free. Um, I think it's like, it, this is the first time we've been like all together, like uh, for this event, because we went to Malta to boot camp and then we come here and we're playing on stage for the first time all together. And uh, yeah, I think it, it, it's a massive impact uh, on land stage, stage games and stuff. And, you know, that actually leads me into the next question. Durka had an incredible performance. And, you know, some people, you know, you talked about how you'd maybe playing a little too loose uh, before, but Durka actually mm -hmm. had a really, really good performance uh, in this last series that you had versus version one. And I was actually about to ask, did you guys make any adjustments to enable him a little bit more? Or was it just Durka just finding his pace? Um... I think it was a bit of uh, trying to facilitate him with the utility because Durka is the best player in the world. He's the, uh, uh, he, he probably going to be up there. Like someone's going to tell it, say it soon, I guess, um, if he keeps up in this form. And I, I think I had a one-on-one -on -one with him today because um, uh, just to like kind of get him in the kind of mental mentality and into the zone of this game. And I guess it kind of worked because he went and popped off and all I had to do was make sure I was just there to flash for him or make sure that some like they had good setups where they they know what the other person's doing so they don't have to come as much and think as much on the fly because uh, Dirk is uh, good at thinking on the fly. So as long as he has, um, even though he's good at thinking on the fly, I mean, uh, he has some setups which he knows are safe setups that he can go into and still be aggressive and stuff. It was sick. Okay, okay. And, you know, versus version one, a lot of people predicted them to be towards the bottom of the pack. They recently had a sub and you just finished playing them. <laughs> do you feel like they, as a team, overperformed expectations in this match versus you? Or do you feel, and did you feel extremely confident going in or were you a little bit worried? Um, I'm never extremely confident going into games. I'm a uh, false confidence. I'm saying, yeah, we're going to beat them. Two zeros, come on, we're better. But I did genuinely, obviously, I'm here to win. And uh, like, if I didn't believe in our team to win, then why am I even competing? So I did believe that we were going to win, but I didn't believe that it was going to be easy. And boy, oh boy, was I uh, correct in that because uh, it was not easy. And But I'm just really happy that uh, we got through Icebox in one piece and then made it to Ascent and just kind of popped off it, we took that momentum and that's why we like two zeros because we like momentum you know speaking of ascent actually um you guys played something a little bit different uh that we were affected because you you know you were on the sky you also had mm. moved over uh magnum to the to the cypher versus a lot of the killjoy that we've been seeing magnum on and, and had doma playing the omen as well was this something that you crafted specifically for version one or like what was your reason behind that comp um, I think it's a case of, uh, because obviously if we could run Astra, we probably would, but the way the map works, I think like you need me on a more impactful agent than just a smoker agent. Uh, I like, I need to be getting the info, especially, and I need to be doing the plays that can get the info, which is why I was on Sova. But what I found with Sova was he wasn't very good on CT side. Um, in terms of because I was playing him on A. So I wanted to have an agent that could get info whilst also being somewhat good at T side, whilst also um, being able to have A setups. And that's when Sky came into play. We switched on to her about five days ago. I made some setups two days ago, played two scrims, and here we are uh, rocking up to a, a game versus version one, and bada bing, bada boom, we won. Woohoo! Yeah, definitely. And, and speaking of the map pool here a little bit more, um, we've been noticing a lot on plat chat is that and also obviously thinking about you guys on fanatic your bind has always been amazing but there's been a distinct lack of bind played here especially versus the european team because teams have just been banning it all the way through do you feel like this has hurt europe as a region at this event and specifically you or do you feel like the map pools are deep enough um now nah, we prepared for this um it might it, like obviously it's annoying that we can't play bind but 
uh, we prepared for this. Uh, we were expecting teams to, especially NA teams, because I know that they do not like Bayern whatsoever. Wasn't sure about all the other regions coming into it, but you know we're just comfortable in Bayern. We're, we're, it's, it's our best map, so like we didn't have to prepare like much for it, or if if we needed to kind of um, get it ready because um, it's already ready, and just a few b little bits and things changed and stuff, and. Yeah, it was just about focusing on the other maps, which we would like. We knew what the bracket was. We knew who we could potentially be playing. So we went and buffed their other maps. We gave them the old uh, buff. And I, I think sort of a looking at the meta here too, especially since that recent match of version one, they've been kind of a proponent of this post-plant meta, as people are calling it a lot of the times, the artillery meta. How do you feel mm. like that's currently a little too strong, or do you think that it, there are definitely plenty of ways to counter it? Yeah, it's a weird one because uh, I find it weird it's on Haven because that's, that, that map has three bomb sites and it's really hard to hold all three bomb sites at one time with enough players. So it's, it's, it's really difficult with the post plant meta on that one. I, I, I'll tell you that now. It's like it's a difficult one. And the post plant meta in general is a bit like tedious. I mean, we started it on Bind ages ago before it was like super OP. But now since the all the other buffs and whatnot, it's like super broken, especially with that Viper. Um, yeah, post plant meta. We we started it and we hate it. <laughs> but no, I I, I it's, it's difficult. And I guess just here is a final question. You know, the walkout meta has been evolving a bit as we've gone throughout the tournament. You guys have been innovators, uh, and you know we noticed after you did your walkout today, you were holding that wrist. Do you feel like you know maybe the coach is gonna have to sit you down and say like, hey, you know, calm down a bit. Got to protect the wrist. Got to protect the goods. Uh, I was only joking about the wrist. Uh, I obviously. Um, I guess if Mini went and said that to me, that would be hilarious. I'd probably just laugh because, like, Mini coming down telling me off, yo, protect your wrists. That would be funny. Um, uh, but, yeah, I was, I was like, joking around with my wrists. It didn't actually hurt that much. And I made sure that, like, I was I, – I, get, I actually did some stretches beforehand. Like, when we were off backstage, I was doing the old gymnastic stretches for the wrist and whatnot, making sure that I didn't get any injuries before the game because, uh, um, obviously, the game is what matters, not – how much of a show we can put on coming into the game. <laughs> All right, well, you guys have been putting on a show, and I really appreciate your time, Boaster. Uh, that's going to be it for us, and uh, you're free to go, and we're, we're rooting for you the rest of the land. I mean, we prayed we pray for you guys on the desk. Thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure, and thanks for interviewing me. Thank you to all the fans supporting. And, yeah, let's get it. Lower bracket grind. Choo-choo. All right, thank you, Boaster.